on the path of perdition. I see the smokestacks in my periphery. Often over time, spewing the residue of the working class's faith in democracy. Church house, children on their bedrooms. Any time that you take uh, uh, corporate dollars, instead of doing what you're supposed to, the, the, the NAACP is what you is, a, is classified as a civil rights organization. They no longer fight for civil rights, and they take the corporate dollars, and they use that money to better their life, not the community. So they have been inside our community doing exactly nothing and being more like a buffer for the government and the corporations. We're delighted to have Reverend Pinckney and his group of activists come here. Uh, they have a, a, a very legitimate beef with the NAACP about um, you know, conniving with corporate uh, and banking interests, conniving with the Obama administration. They care nothing about the people. Things like austerity uh, and the president having this sequestering. Where's the NAACP? Through you, but when we want you to vote, vote all by color as a block for people who ignore you. I mean, that's, it's, it's despicable what they've done, and they shouldn't have tax exempt status. If they want to be DNC light or the black DNC, be black DNC and stop saying you represent me. They don't. The NAACP must go. The NAACP must go. They've gotten a pass just because they have a skin color. Well, we have a black president now. That's supposed to signal a change. Well, it's a change for me. I don't just look at what you look like. What do you do? The, the way that I got to know Reverend Pinckney is that he's a leader of the mass resistance in Michigan. The governor of Michigan, Rick Snyder, his ideas are about as old as uh, fascism, I guess. And his idea is to send in dictators to run cities. So there's no mayor, there's no city council. They have already trained 175, 175 emergency financial managers. And Benton Harbor can only have one. Detroit can only have one. So the rest of them is for the rest of the country. It's coming to your community next. And people need to know this. They were just experimenting in the city of Benton Harbor. Now they have Detroit. And the new emergency manager law is so sweeping that the, this dictator in Detroit, this guy Kevin Orr, O-R-R, -R, lawyer, he asset stripped uh, Chrysler. He can now asset strip Detroit any way he wants. And we have, De we have Benton Harbor, Flint, Pontiac, Ecorse, some school systems, Highland Park, places like this. What they're doing now, they're showing that, you know, that they're going to put these people all over the country. And it's time that people take a stand and stand up and fight for it. I think most people in the United States don't realize what creeping fascism looks like. You know, it doesn't necessarily come with a coup d'etat in Washington, D.C. As a matter of fact, historically, Italian fascism and German fascism don't start in the capital. They start by a gradual seizure of power in one place after another. It's unfortunate that uh, the media, which is a conglomerated mess that represents the, the few, doesn't put this out to explain to people that the standard of living for young people, <laughs> the coming generations will be far less than what their parents and grandparents had. Austerity means uh, if you have a grandmother or a grandfather, people who put in the system for social security, that being taken away from them. What happened in, in Cyprus where people can go in and take people's uh, bank accounts from them after they've already paid taxes on the money? It, it's the closing of schools that you see all over the country. D.C., they want to close a bunch of schools. Chicago, New York. It's basically the dismantling of the state for the few that the many pay for and what they replace the infrastructure with is more coercion, more cameras, more cops, more torture, drones. It's fascism without the infrastructure of Nazi Germany. At least the Nazis built infrastructure. They put up the Autobahn and they built stadiums. This is about building nothing, taking it all, and using repression, jailing, beating. It, it's about making us essentially post-industrial slaves.
That's the step-by-step -step process. Now we have Stockton, California is in uh, crisis. We have probably, you know, uh, 20 other cities that are in the same area. A lot of them are victims of toxic derivatives. They need a debt moratorium, debt freeze, stop paying that stuff. Uh, there's about a billion dollars of uh, derivatives payments that Detroit is supposed to make. It's crazy. Uh, we should ban credit default swaps and other credit derivatives. And this idea of a Wall Street sales tax. In other words, where would Detroit get the money they need if they can't borrow it? Uh, they could get it through revenue sharing from a federal uh, tax on all Wall Street turnover. And that's, that's what should happen, I would say. The fight has, has been tremendous. Uh, in the city of Benton Harbor, we got rid of one emergency manager, but unfortunately they brought in another one. And I, I believe the best way to, to deal with them is to make sure that you stay on top of what's going on. One of the things that we believe in doing action, we don't sit around and talk about it, we be about it. And, and, and one of the things that uh, we did with, <laughs> with, with, with Governor Snyder when he came to Benton Harbor for a parade, we showed him what we can do. You know, we put out 5,000 people. But the point is that we have to show people that we're willing to fight them. Most of the time they figure like, you know, you're too busy to come out and fight. You're too busy to do this. But I'm going to fight them until the end, especially about the emergency manager. That is a law that's unconstitutional, and it takes away the, the people's voice. And we're going to stand up and fight that one until the end. You can go to bhbanco.org. That's bhbanco.org. And you can also call me at 269 Nine two five zero 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 one. Walking on the path of perdition, I see the smokestacks in my periphery. Huffing over time, spewing the residue of the working class's faith in democracy. Church house tilting on that bank note, attracting folk. Give me some money, Lord, yeah. A three-piece snack is riding on a three-minute song with that horse hair selling out while the subwoofers bumping, hollering about I'm hungry for freedom. But I don't know how to eat that way because I'm...